Hi folks, I would like to discuss with you an article that appeared in the Dallas Morning News and I'm sure appeared in newspapers and news outlets all across the universe. Yeah, that's what it did kids. We all got to read about it. And here it is. That's right. China, the Middle Kingdom, commie-led China, is now the number two economy in the world, surpassing Japan, and now being just below these here United States of America. And it is reported that in the probably 15 to 20 years, China will surpass the United States as being number one in its economy. Well, you know, folks, I say that is just numbers, all right? However, if we were to interpret those numbers, we would get an entirely different picture as to who's number one, who's number two, who's number three, and in this case, who's number 92. There's some numbers. The average person in China earns about $3,000 a year, in Japan, $37,000, and the United States of America, $42,000. But once again, we're just talking about numbers. The United Nations, those bums on the East River in Manhattan, they come out with a report called the Human Development Report, rating nations and their livability and, uh, with, with their people. And Japan comes in number 10, the United States number 13, and China way down there in number 92. But once again, I say these are just numbers. And as far as these numbers go in relation to people, I say forget about it. So how do you measure the advancement of a particular country if we're not going to use the numbers? You ask some pretty good questions. And I hope I have equal answers. <laughs> the standard of living, how the average person lives. All right, folks? You know as well as I do that the average person in Japan and the United States enjoys a far better life, a far better standard of living than the average person in China. Now, don't give me all sorts of historical excuses and reasons. I'm talking today, right now. Now, hopefully that will change in the future. And let me tell you why I say that. A prosperous China is a China we can all look forward to. I don't begrudge the people in China, the average person, becoming prosperous and advancing. No, because when they do, it's to the benefit of us to the rest of the world. And, that, and I say that because when people become more prosperous, they demand more freedoms. Hmm, more freedoms from China. When people become more prosperous, they want greater involvement in their government. Hmm, you mean there may be more than one political party allowed in China? So with the greater participation of the average person in China with their newfound wealth and prosperity, China becomes less of a threat to its neighbors in Asia. And that transcends across to the Pacific to the United States of America. So that's why I would like to see China become prosperous. All right, folks? But let us step back with the numbers and the standard of living today, 2010. China number two, Japan number three, the United States number one, according to those economic statistics, which to me is a lot of hooey, because you know how the average poor person lives in China. I'm not so sure how the average poor person lives in Japan, but I'm going to tell you what the average poor person here in the United States lives like. Me! No. <laughs> no. I'm not poor, thank God for that. But I'm not wealthy also. And thank God for that. I'm quite content where I am. But the average poor person in the United States lives in their own home. Either they own it or they rent it. That's right, their own home. Usually have central air conditioning and central heat. A microwave oven, color TV, probably cable or satellite service, internet service, with a computer, an automobile, free health care, free food, rent subsidies if they're renting, and that child daycare pay all of or in part of. Now, can you say that for the poor person in China? No, you can't say that. But the poor person in the United States, we can say that for. 
So that's what I'm comparing here, people, all right? So never mind who's number one, who's number two, who's number three. I'm sure China has a long way to go, and hopefully their poor people will be equally as poor as the poor people <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> like Rush Limbaugh once said, we have the richest poor people live here in the United States. Now that may not be true. I'm sure other countries treat their poor people just as well as we do in this country. Oh, I, did I mention we also have free medical care for our, uh, poor people? All right. So now China in a couple of years, 10 to 15, 20 years, becomes the number one economy. All right. This should be China. This should be the United States and Japan rallying behind that. Because now we can fold our arms in China, in China. We can fold our arms in the United States and Japan. Sit back. And whenever there's a tragedy around the world, well, China could be the number one nation in there to help out. Whenever there's a military situation around the world to be resolved, why China could step in there and resolve the situation. And we could just sit back and watch China become the number one benefactor to the world. Why? Because they're going to have the number one economy. See? We'll see how that all interprets our kids. <laughs> we'll see you. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the nation you happen to be in. See ya.